Today, we will have the opportunity to discuss and exchange views on how our countries can work together to strengthen the already good relations that our countries enjoy. Last year, 2022, we commemorated 30 years of diplomatic relations between South Africa and the Russian Federation. The rich history of our relations, of course, date back to the period of the struggle against apartheid, where the people of South Africa fought in their quest for political and economic freedom. And we fully recall the support that members of the Soviet Union provided to our country, and in particular, Russia, as a leading country in the Soviet Union. Minister, I'm really proud that we enjoy excellent diplomatic relations with your country, which we regard as a valued partner. Our bilateral relations with your country consist of relations in the political, economic, social defense, and security spheres. Since the establishment of diplomatic relations between our two countries, there are a number of bilateral agreements and memoranda of understanding that we've signed which cover that broad spectrum of sectors I've referred to. They include memoranda on trade, on tourism, on agriculture, on mining, medicine, and education. And I'm aware that there are many more that both our governments are still considering. Furthermore, we've also had a number of high-level visits as well as engagements on the margins of international and multilateral levels in the past few years. I'm really pleased that the Intergovernmental Committee on Trade and Economic Cooperation remains an active platform for coordinating our bilateral relations and that ITEC continues to meet regularly and has made considerable progress in deepening the cooperation between South Africa and the Russian Federation. In addition, our countries share growing economic bilateral relationship, both in terms of trade and investments. However, it is my view that both our countries can and must do more to develop and capitalize on opportunities to increase our cooperation in the economic sphere. At the multilateral level, our countries continue to demonstrate the resolve to continuously work together bilaterally and in multilateral fora, such as the United Nations and through the BRICS formation, through a strong alliance of positions on multilateral issues, as well as support for the democratization of the global governance system through democratizing the United Nations body and its mechanism, and of course, shared collaboration in the context of G20 and within the BRICS forum. We have been very excited at the progress that the New Development Bank of BRICS has made since its establishment. And we are pleased that as South Africa, we've been the beneficiary of significant bankable project support from the BRICS Bank. The current global geopolitical tensions clearly signal the need for us to consider creating institutional mechanisms that will have the stature, form, and global trust to promote and support global peace and security. We believe that BRICS should play a proactive role in emerging deliberations on the form that these international global mechanisms might take. And we must ensure that BRICS is part of a redesigned global framework. For us, multilateralism lies at the heart of the biggest issues facing the world today. More effort should be directed at promoting peace and security, fair trade and human rights, 
to ending hunger, preventing health epidemics, tackling the challenges of climate change, and taking measures to protect the environment. All of these issues require global cooperation as they go beyond individual countries and cultures. As the African continent, we have witnessed and have overcome many, many conflicts. We know that the conflicts confronting Africa today have disappeared from international mention, but we are still experiencing devastating effects on many countries on the continent, both in the political sphere as well as economic uh, 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 effects. As a continent, we have undertaken that we will endeavor to work toward peaceful resolution of all conflicts and use diplomacy and the search for peace as a route to the resolution of disputes. And within the context of the African Union, we have agreed this is a route we will undertake. Therefore, we're fully alert that conflict, wherever it exists in the world, impacts negatively on all of us. And as the developing world impacts on us, particularly as the African continent. This is why as South Africa, we consistently articulate that we will always stand ready to support the peaceful resolution of conflicts in the continent and throughout the globe. South Africa believes that the only path to peace is through diplomacy, through dialogue, and through a commitment to the principles of the UN Charter, including the principle that all member states will endeavor to settle disputes by peaceful means. It is important, therefore, that I mention on behalf of South Africa our sincere wish that the conflict currently between Russia and Ukraine will soon be brought to a peaceful end through diplomacy and negotiation, as we believe this is the desire of all of us in the globe. Once more, Minister, allow me to conclude by welcoming you to our country and by expressing my wish that we will have fruitful deliberations on issues that are of core concern and interest to both our countries. I thank you very much, and I now invite you, Minister Lavrov, to present your opening remarks. And we then will allow the media to leave our meeting. Honourable They want them to leave now? <laughs> okay. Not now. Thank you very much. Over uh, to you, Minister. Dear Madam Minister, uh, thank you for your... Большое спасибо, госпожа министр. We are in the margins of BRICS Ministerial. You invited me to visit. It's indeed some time since I last uh, was here. Uh, I promised, and here am I. Thank you for your, for your hospitality, for the uh, organization of our activities, the way which is most productive. Indeed, I basically share everything uh, you said about our bilateral relations including regular political dialogue between our leaders, including quite intense contacts between the parliamentarians, both as they exchange bilateral visits and as they meet uh, in the context of uh, uh, inter-parliamentary uh, union. There was recently a meeting of the working group of inter-parliamentary union on the situation in Ukraine and the speakers of the Federation Council of Russia and of the National Assembly of South Africa participated. Uh, they also uh, took part uh, in the context of uh, parliamentarians uh, getting together under G20 aegis. Uh, and of course, uh, we appreciate regular uh, contacts and cooperation between the ruling parties, United Russia and African National Congress they are in touch with each other. Uh, dialogue between our ministries uh, is very much confidential, friendly, open, sincere, uh, and uh, certainly I, I would be remiss if I don't mention the context between our military, the representatives uh, of your Ministry of Defense, uh, 
uh, including the, the minister himself, regularly visit events which we, which our, our Ministry of Defense organizes in Russia, uh, as it was uh, last August when the International Military Technical Forum Army 2022 uh, was held. Uh, we have uh, broad cooperation in uh, the area of economy, uh, outer space, uh, natural resources, uh, high technology, uh, and as you said, Madam Minister, the Intergovernmental Commission on Trade and Economic Issues is an important instrument and uh, we hope that they can meet, they can meet uh, in a couple of months as, as the co-chair discuss uh, between themselves. Uh, humanitarian uh, cooperation, educational cooperation, uh, cultural exchanges, uh, all this is uh, in the interest of our peoples and we uh, thank you for paying attention to this important, important uh, area uh, of our of our relations. Uh, indeed, as you said, on international arena, uh, we have good relations between our ambassadors to the United Nations, uh, and I would highlight uh, the issue of the Security Council reform, where we strongly support the uh, additional seats for developing countries, because it is the underrepresentation of Africa, Asia, and Latin America, which is the key problem of the Council today. Uh, and certainly, we uh, cherish our cooperation in G20, the latest summit in Indonesia, uh, was, I believe, uh, quite telling about the desire of all members, or most members of the G20 to concentrate on the original mandate of this group and not to politicize the agenda items. And of course, we look forward to uh, South Africa uh, presidency in BRICS. The agenda is uh, huge and very important, especially in the context of the developments, not very uh, helpful developments uh, in, the, in the world economy and the world Finances, finances, you mentioned about this, uh, Madam Minister. Uh, we are all in favor, in favor of uh, peaceful resolution of disputes, and uh, will be will be always ready to discuss uh, negotiated solution to any conflict on Earth. Unfortunately, most of the conflicts launched by our uh, Western uh, colleagues did not lead to any improvement in the situation. Uh, and uh, this is something which the world inherited. As regards uh, the specific situation between us and Ukraine, uh, it is well known that uh, we supported the proposal of Ukrainian uh, side to negotiate early in the, uh, in the uh, special military operation and by the end of March in Istanbul, two delegations agreed on the principles to settle this conflict. It is well known, it was published uh, openly that uh, our uh, American and British and some European colleagues told Ukraine that it is too early to deal and the, the uh, arrangement which was almost agreed uh, was never revisited by the Kyiv regime. And uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, Madam Minister, in September, President Zelensky signed a decree prohibiting all Ukrainian officials to negotiate on anything with the Russian Federation. So I believe it is uh, absolutely obvious as regards the origin of the problem of lack of uh, negotiations. Uh, but I would like to highly appreciate the position of principle of South Africa, including the position which you, Madam Minister, uh, introduced in your recent interview. Uh, I respect the openness and the responsible approach which you demonstrated on the basis of your allegiance to the key national interest of South Africa and uh, its, its people. 
So I look forward to very productive negotiations. And once again, thank you for your invitation and for your hospitality.